Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Doing a quick video today, as you can see, we're not in our normal studio. That's because I just want to take this opportunity to go through how I work with 360 degree camera files in Premiere Pro. This is because you can't just import the Premiere Pro file and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to open up Premiere Pro. As you can see here, we're going to start a new project and we'll just call it 360 file. And once that opens up here, if I take my 360 files here, these are the, they have GS written in them, and I go to drop it in there, it'll give me an error. File format not supported. So we need to switch the file format of the 360 files. So to do that, we need to go to the GoPro website. So you can just go to Google and just type GoPro like that. You'll get the GoPro website, gopro.com. That opens us up to the GoPro website. You're going to go to apps. And what you're looking for is the player and real steady pro stabilization plus 360 Mac and Windows. So you're going to click on that. And then I've got a Windows PC, so I'm going to say get it from the Microsoft Store. And now that's what it looks like. I'm going to say get in store and open the Microsoft Store. I don't know why they make you do this. It's stupid. But I'll say get. Then it's going to download. I am currently on satellite internet, so it's a little bit slower, but not much. So now we can open. We're going to install it. And here we go. So now I have the GoPro player, um, whatever, welcome to the GoPro, well, GoPro player. So I'll say open media. And now I have my media on uh, the downloads. So I'm going to select, it doesn't matter which one, I'm gonna just pick one of them. Now I have my 360 footage, you can see I can move it all around. If I only have one file, I could export this, but I don't only have one file, so I'm going to show you how to bulk export and convert the files. So what we want to do is go to here, click on file, click on batch exporter, and click that. That will open up a whole new thing. Now I can actually close that, and I'll close that, and I'll close that. So now I just have this. Now I can drop those files in there. So these files that I had here, I can highlight those and drop them into here, I hope. There's one. Oh no, that did both. Okay, now I have both files here, so I'm gonna close this to get it out of the way. Now here's what I do. This is what I do. I'm not gonna explain all the different options and settings. This is strictly what I do. You can do what I do, or you can go and research why I do what I do, but just trust me, I have done the research, and this is the easiest way to do it when you're editing in the footage for most people. So you want to hold down shift and highlight both files or all the files. I've done this with like 30 files all at once. So you highlight the files. You want to make sure your codec is Cineform. You want to make sure your resolution is 5.6K. Now you can change your quality. The higher the quality, the bigger the file size. Just for comparison, you can see these files are quite small right now. They're less than a gigabyte. Once I do what I'm doing here, they will be, let me just re-highlight them all, they will be massive. So high is usually just fine. Now, I turn world lock off, and there's a good reason for that. If you don't understand world lock, I'll try to explain it real quickly. Imagine that the camera is, is filming and it's turning. World lock means that the camera will always point the direction that you're looking. So even if the camera turns, your viewer will stay in the same position. Typically, that is not the mode you want. You want it to, as you turn, you want the camera to turn. That's how I find editing works the best. So I turn world lock off. You can turn world, you can turn world lock on if you want, but I do not. I leave horizon lock on so that it at least locks your horizon. 
And then I don't check off 360 audio or anything. So the only thing I have is Horizon Lock, high quality, 5.6K, Cineform. And you can change the settings per video. So this is why I've selected them all and applied these settings. Now I'm going to hit Start. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to choose the output directory. So right now it's going to see users, Gears and Tech video. I'm going to just put them on my desktop. You can put them wherever you want. Then you hit Start. You can see it. Uh, there's a huge storm coming right now. You can probably hear the rain. Uh, that's why I'm inside shooting a video instead of being outside in the rain right now. Uh, so because these videos are rather small, they're only a minute and a half. They're only about a minute and a half each, uh, just under two minutes. So it will go rather quickly. This will be tasking your GPU with a lot of information. So if I pull up, let's see if I can pull this up and we can watch it. I'll pull up my task manager. And then we'll go to more details and we'll go to performance. So you can see what this is doing. There, maybe over here is the best, right there. So you can see my GPU. I've got a, this is my laptop. So my GeForce GPU is at 31% utilization right now. My CPU is at 100%. Let's make this a little bit bigger. 100% CPU. This is a Ryzen 5. It is a laptop uh, processor. So obviously going to get hit hard. But this is a multi-core processor, which is why it does it rather quickly. And again, you can see a little spike in the, uh, the GPU usage. This has a GeForce GTX 1650 which is not the newest video card, but it's pretty darn good. So I'll come back once this is complete, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, both files have finished converting now, so now I should be able to drop the new files into Premiere Pro. So I'm going to close the exporter, and now I'm going to click on Import Media to Start. So I had put these on my desktop, so there's one. And here's two and I can open those and it should import the files and it does so these are now dot mov style of files I can drop them into Premiere Pro and this is now a 360 file and I can apply the GoPro filters that I've shown how to use in a different video so I'm not going to show you how to actually edit these files in Premiere Pro this was strictly how to convert the file so that you can use it in Premiere Pro. So now you can continue. Now you can go and do your editing from here. If you want to leave it as a 360, or what I usually do is flatten that out and use it as a um, as footage that I can reframe after the fact when I've got a lot going on and I'm not sure how I want to use it. So this is two converted files. Now I'm going to close this so you can see. Here's one file, and here's the other file. So there we can compare them side by side. So the original file was 861 megabytes and this one is now 6.61 gigabytes. The other one it was a smaller file so it was 760 megabytes and it is 4.44 gigabytes. So the files will increase in size by at least five times. So from a storage perspective it uses a ton of extra storage to, to do this conversion. However, uh, Premiere Pro just does not how to does not know how to use the 360 files, so you have no choice if you're working with a 360 file. But if you're doing like I do, so I personally run a file server and I pass the footage on to my editors. I can use I can load the 360 file up in my file server. They can download that and then do the conversion within their own computer and inflate the file size after the fact. And that's one of the big reasons why I would do this this way. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. 
you can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.